Now carefully observe the function sin of step of cos x by 1 plus step of cos x and we need the limit of x tends to 0 for this function. As greatest integer function is involved, let's evaluate the left hand limit of this function and the right hand limit. How will be the left hand limit at 0 to this given function? That would be limit x tends to 0 minus f of x. That is in terms of h when we express this, this becomes limit h tends to 0 f of 0 minus h, right? That is limit h tends to 0 sin of step of cos of minus h by 1 plus step of cos of minus h. Now as cos of minus theta is again cos theta, this would be limit h tends to 0 sin of step of cos h by 1 plus step of cos h. Now observe the value of cos h as h tends to 0. As h tends to 0, what do we observe? Cos h value would be less than 1. And as the angle is in first quadrant, 0 is a positive number, 0 plus that is h is a positive number, then h is an angle in first quadrant, then in first quadrant cos h is a number which lies between 0 and 1, right? Then how much is step of cos h? Yes, step of cos h would be 0. Then what would happen to the required limit? This becomes sine of 0 by 1 plus 0. That would be 0 by 1. So we are able to calculate the left hand limit and the limit comes to be 0. Now let us see what will be the right hand limit of the function. That would be limit x tends to 0 plus f of x. Now by definition of limit x tends to 0 plus expressed in h, this is limit h tends to 0 f of 0 plus h. That is again limit h tends to 0 sin of step of cos h by 1 plus step of cos h. Now how much is cos h as h tends to 0? Follows the same argument. Then this is again sin 0 by 1 plus 0. That would be again 0. So now the right hand limit is also 0. Therefore left hand limit exists and that is equal to right hand limit and both the values are equal to 0. Therefore how much is the limit of x tends to 0 for the given function f of x? Yes, the limit should be equal to 0 which is present at option B.